So it starts when I was young, um, until about age six, I had just an awful childhood. Um, my dad was very abusive to my mother and my siblings, and God gave my mom a way out. Um, we left when I was six, and the rest of my childhood was fairly normal and just full of love. Um, but I always felt like there was just this part of me inside that was just empty and uncertain and scared and anxious. And um, it just felt like it was always there. Um, in high school, I started um, just experimenting with drugs. I started um, just with, with pot. And I soon realized that it really was masking and covering this emptiness that I felt inside. It seemed like it helped. Um, I smoked pot through high school, nothing crazy. Um, got into my 20s. Um, I met my ex-husband. I was with him 19 years. I have three children with him. And um, my marriage ended abruptly after 19 years, um, unexpected, and it just really affected me. It broke my heart. And um, it just got worse, the emptiness inside, the fear, the uncertainty, the sh just awful feelings all the time. Um, and the only thing that would make it go away was to numb it. And so um, I started drinking a little bit and smoking pot and doing pills and when I wasn't I would set like drinking down but then I would pick up pills I just wasn't able to get a hold of myself I mean I would have six months clean maybe and then I would just fall again and try to just the hurt would just be too bad and um, I went through my divorce and um, I was always just felt like this undercurrent was just trying to pull me down with my addiction. You know, I don't ever remember being young and thinking to myself, when I grow up, I want to be an addict, you know? Um, and that is exactly what happened to me. Um, I started hanging out with a new group of friends. I had met a girl at work and um, I started going over to her house. It was just new people that I had never known before. And um, we started going out on Friday nights, just dancing, having fun. I was single um, and at one of the times that we were um, getting ready to go out, one of the girls brought in some cocaine. And I just did a small line, you know, and we went out dancing. And it was seemed fun. I really didn't think anything of it. Um, we did that for about six months. Just occasionally someone would bring it. Um, one weekend we went out dancing and there was some left over and someone gave it to me. And during the week, um, I did a little bit before work and I just, it started to escalate. Um, I just started to do it more and more and more. Um, through this group of friends, I met um, this guy who was an addict and did drugs. And um, he showed me how to smoke it. My life just started, this dark path just started. Just, I started venturing down this dark path um, with addiction, not thinking that I was addicted, thinking at any point, you know, well, I can stop. I mean, and it just got darker and darker and darker. And honestly, I never thought that um, I would end up where I did. There, were, never knew there were so many different shades of black in my addiction. Um, so before I knew it, I was just utterly lost. And that undercurrent that I fought so hard against my entire life swallowed me up. And excuse me, I never get Carry, but it was an awful spot. Um, before I knew it and decided to take inventory of my life, just see, got darker and darker. It didn't seem like it was how it was. Um, when I finally decided to take inventory of my life, I took looked up and I was just in utter darkness um, without any inkling on how to get out. And like, I could not comprehend the person I had become. Um, in this relationship, it was awful abuse. Um, he abused me physically and mentally. I'm actually lucky to have made it out of that. Um, so I would run away and be scared and run away from him. And I ended up um, homeless because of my addiction um, in living in a tent in the river bottom um, in Lakeside and in Spring Valley wandering around in tunnels, um, just lost, addicted. And I can honestly say just 
tormented by darkness, tormented by the dark. Um, I was drugged and raped when I was out um, once, at least once that I know of. Um, just an awful, awful, awful life. The only way to explain where I was was just a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth would describe it perfectly. Um, just every person I encountered was just broken and lost, just like me. And um, without any hope of how do you put things back together, I felt like I was just sitting in the middle of these shattered pieces all around me and I was trying to figure out how to put myself back together, but I didn't have anything to hold it together. I was staying in a garage in Spring Valley and this is when the story gets good. I, um, it was December 20th, 2019, and I had been, I'd fallen really sick. Um, I was deep in my addiction, um, just talking to myself constantly, just out there. And um, I had fallen sick and I was just sick in bed for about a week. I just felt pressed down. I just felt um, just, I could hardly rise to even make it to the bathroom. Um, I was just very, very ill. Um, I woke up one morning and I did what I always do, which is I reached for my drugs. And I felt the love of my Savior hoping for me. Um, and I heard the sweetest voice I've ever heard. And he instructed me on how to get out of that house and, and told me to get out of that house to call my brother. Um, that second that I heard that voice and felt that love, I felt like the fight for my soul really began. I mean, it took every bit of me, well, and of God, Christ, to get out of the back door where I was staying. And I called my brother, my brother Bruce, um, who, by the way, prayed for me for 10 years, and just a beautiful man of God, faithful. Um, I called my brother Bruce, and he picked me up, and he brought me here into this very room that I'm giving my testimony in. And um, he brought me here, and this team of people, this team came in and prayed over me. And I, to be honest, it's kind of, I was kind of in and out. Um, but I remember people coming in and just loving on me and praying for me. And I, my brother managed to get me back into the car and I uh, checked myself into a faith-based program in El Cajon called uh, El Cajon Transmi or Transitional Living Center. I checked myself in there. It's a faith-based program. It's a year program. And um, the Holy Spirit just, captured me. Um, I laid my head on my pillow the first night and God delivered me from my addiction. The emptiness that I felt inside my whole life was gone. I didn't know what it was that I was feeling. I knew that I was not, my mind was not on drugs anymore. My mind was not on the things that you would normally think it should be on and going into a program. Um, I went through a blackout period. They take all the girls up to a house. Um, it's called the ranch and you have a three month blackout period. There's no media, no phone, no friends, no radio, no TV, no anything. It's just you and three Bible studies a day with a group of girls that are in the same boat you are, you know? And um, we were told to copy the book of John, every word. And so I opened the book of John and I sat with my pen and I got to John 1, 5 and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness didn't comprehend it. And the love of God fell on me in a supernatural way that um, I can't describe. He just captured my heart. And we were supposed to finish the book of John in three months, and I was at the end of Romans, like, just sold out for the Lord. I graduated the program, um, and God started restoring my life. I mean, He started, my children loved me through my addiction. They still love me now. I babysit my grandkids full time now. Um, I talk to all three of them every single day. Um, he really truly is faithful, God is, and keeping his promises, he's restoring everything that the locusts have eaten. And um, he filled me with his spirit and I graduated the program and I could feel him just working powerfully in me. Just a love I have never felt, a peace I had never felt. Here I'm. Graduating a program, I have nothing. Because I've been on the streets, I have nothing. I don't know where I'm gonna live, I don't know where I'm gonna work, I don't have a car, I don't have a phone, I don't have, and I had never felt 
so much peace. And I got out of the program and I was like thrown back into the world. Now I'm working full time, I'm renting a room, I'm living my, um, by myself in this room. I'm, and I'm like, okay, so now what's next? I know I'm not gonna be content just going to church on Sundays and that's, that's just not the end of this. Like, I need to know my God. I want to know Him. I wanna know my Savior Jesus Christ. I wanna know this spirit that has filled me with this joy and this peace and this just this sweetness. I just, I want to know my God. And I wanna know how He sees me. I wanna know about this God. You know, and so my brother um, just was like, Melanie, you've got to go through the school of transformation. Like you just, you have to go through it. Like he had graduated, I don't remember, four years ago or something. So I sat in during one class and the Holy Spirit was like, you've got to do this. And of course there was a point where the enemy was like, no, you don't. You know, as soon as I decided I'm going to do this, it was like, the enemy was like, no, you don't. You, you know, you've already gone through a discipleship program. You already graduated CTLC. I mean, just all these excuses kept coming in my mind, like reading the Bible's good, just go to church. And then it was like, I kind of onto your tricks by now. You know what I mean? The enemy, it's like, no, that means I should really do this program. So I went, uh, got into the School of Transformation, expecting to understand my God um, better. and. Also, I didn't have any friends at all because I had left all of them behind. And so uh, I wanted community. And I step into this class and it's just got all these people that have one thing in common and they're all reaching for God. They're all wanting to know their Savior more. And when you get that many people that are reaching for God, you can expect great incredible things to happen. And they did. They honestly did all year long, you know. I learned what God's will is, what pleases Him. Um, I learned how to find that sweet place with the Holy Spirit. I learned to love my story. I mean, every bit of the darkness that I experienced has brought me right here, right now. And there's nothing that feels sweeter than this. I have a hope for my future. It just keeps getting better. I go to sleep at night. I can't wait to get up the next day. I don't know where me and God are gonna go, but I know it's gonna be good. Um, also in the School of Transformation last year in December, I started a, a ministry called Shine Forth. And I go back out onto the streets and I bring the homeless, I go into river bottoms, I go under bridges, and I bring the lost, I bring them Bibles. Um, the church has been giving me Bibles. I bring them Bibles and I tell them my story. And I bring them food and I bring them clothing and water and whatever they need. And every time I go out there, just with armloads of stuff, I'll be like, hey you guys, what do you need? And a lot of times they'll just look at me and say, prayer, I need prayer. And so, there's nothing that makes me feel better than reaching out to these people because I understand them. I understand how they don't feel worthy. I understand how they don't understand how to get out. <laughs> and I know how to get out. Like I, I just escaped that fire and I just go out there and I'm just like, you guys, I know the way out is through Jesus Christ. Like it's, it's the way out. Um, I'm so thankful every day. Um, just to be in my new life.